Hi, my name is Michael Sierra. I want to tell you about something interesting I'll be doing later this summer. The first weekend of August I will ride 192 miles across Massachusetts in a wonderful event called the PanMass Challenge. The PMC raises funds for cancer research and treatment at Boston's world-renowned Dana-Farber Cancer Institute, which many of you may know as the Jimmy Fund. I'd like to give you an idea of what it's like to ride at least part of that way, so for a little while at least I invite you to please tag along with me for a training ride, and maybe I can have a quick word with you. But first, I want to plant an absurd thought in your head, and that is, never say Jack Doodle Zebras. Say it over and over again a few times, and we'll try to remember it later. Never say Jack Doodle Zebras. Never say Jack Doodle Zebras. Got it? Okay, let's go. Now, to understand what it's like to ride in the Pan Mass Challenge, you might have to use your imagination. Imagine this road is lined with thousands of people, cheering you on, whooping it up, holding signs and pictures of their loved ones who have struggled with or died of cancer. These people have gotten up early in the morning to see you go by. They're sitting in lawn chairs, and they have a cup of coffee in one hand and a noisemaker in the other. Sometimes their voices have gone hoarse from yelling. Sometimes they're banging pot lids together. Sometimes they're just holding up signs saying, you saved my life, thanks. Also imagine you're biking with a bunch of other riders. Okay, you're riding with 6,000 other riders. And that in order to participate, each one of these riders has had to raise thousands of dollars just like you. Not hundreds of dollars, but thousands. And not just hundreds of riders either, thousands. These men and women come from all over the country to ride in this event, young and old. Some riders have battled cancer themselves or are currently undergoing treatment. There's even a guy who's riding with only one leg that he lost to cancer as a child. Can you imagine riding 192 miles with only one leg? There are also about 3,000 volunteers supporting the riders to make it all possible. And that means directing traffic, manning rest stops, handing out sandwiches and bananas, pouring Gatorade, fixing flat tires, providing medical care, helping you work the cramps out of your legs, you name it. Or how about setting up a small town where all these bikers will need to eat and sleep after their first day's ride? How about shipping all the riders' luggage from the starting line? Unloading huge pallets of food from an 18-wheeler at 4 in the morning? The logistics of this event are truly amazing, like something out of the military. Nobody is getting a nickel for all this work, and everything is donated. Okay, so far we've probably biked about a mile or so. Imagine biking 110 miles one day, and then getting up the next day at the crack of dawn and pulling down another 82. The ride starts out in Sturbridge in the middle of Massachusetts and winds up at the head of Buzzards Bay. The next morning you cross over onto Cape Cod and bike all the way into Provincetown, which is at the very tip of the Cape, where the Pilgrims first landed. Even if you're from New England, it may be hard to get a feel for just how long a ride that is. It's roughly like biking from Boston to New York City, or from New York straight into Baltimore. Or for you Virginians, it's like driving from DC down to Norfolk. It's like going from Detroit, past Grand Rapids, all the way to Lake Michigan, or from San Francisco to Yosemite, or Anaheim to San Diego and back. From Seattle to Portland, and then tack on another 20 miles. Texans, it's like driving from Austin to Fort Worth, from Des Moines down to Kansas City, from Miami up to Cape Canaveral. Or for you Brits, it's like going from London up to Leeds, from Belfast down to Galway. It's like rolling into Paris from the part of Normandy right around Utah Beach. Now this happens every year, the first weekend of August, rain or shine. So, 192 miles is definitely a long way, but riding it is absolutely nothing compared with what cancer patients must endure every day. I started riding because of my brother-in-law, Bryce McHale. When he contracted colon cancer, I thought, well, what can I do? I knew about the Pan Mass Challenge, and I knew what an inspiration it served to so many, and I knew that he liked to bike himself, so he could certainly relate. So I asked everybody I knew to help out and contribute, and they did. So I reached my fundraising goal, and rode my first Pan Mass Challenge in 2005, and I have to say it changed my life. But unfortunately, when I did ride, it was a week after Bryce died. Another week after that, we attended his memorial. His death came just a few days short of his 41st birthday. Now I told you that 192 miles is nothing, but let me give you an idea of what kind of nothing I mean. About 12 million people contract cancer each year, and of those, it kills roughly 7 million people. Now, how much is 12 million? Well, it's a lot more than 192 for one thing. 
It's roughly the population of Los Angeles or Cairo or Beijing in China. But that's not very helpful, is it? Here's a good way to understand what 12 million means. Go to Google and type in these four words. 192 miles in inches. That's 12 million. So when I mentioned when you ride the PMC, there are people lining the road cheering you on. Understand there are a lot of people there, but not nearly enough to line the entire route. I mean, come on, that's a long way. And for much of the ride, you're on your own. But imagine instead that the entire route is lined with people. Every inch of the way, there's another human being standing by the side of the road. That means a huge crowd of people line the route. Let's say they're all standing on one side of the road and they're spaced shoulder to shoulder, about two feet next to each other. That means 24 layers of people stretching the whole way, watching you go by hour after hour. Now imagine over half those people slowly crossing the road and lying down on the other side and not getting up again. That's what happens every year. Now think about all the people we passed during this ride, just in the time it took for me to tell you this. That's why I'm riding. The Pan Mass Challenge is the nation's oldest fundraising bikeathon and its most enduringly successful charitable athletic event. The PMC is now in its 30th year and so far has raised over $240 million for Dana Farber's Jimmy Fund, half its current revenue, $35 million in the last year alone. This represents a significant portion of Dana-Farber's operating budget, which depends heavily on the generosity of people like yourself. And do you remember when I mentioned that the entire event was run by volunteers using donated goods? That means every dollar you donate, 100%, goes to the Jimmy Fund for life-saving care. For its part, Dana-Farber is one of the world's top cancer research and treatment centers. The Institute's president, Dr. Edward Benz, had this to say about their progress. He said, Dana-Farber investigators have recently discovered an array of genes linked to lung cancer and pinpointed a protein that triggers the self-destruct mechanism of cancer cells. They have identified a protein biomarker that indicates the presence of a particularly aggressive form of breast cancer and are showing how tumors' genetic signatures can guide therapy for individual patients. To which I'll add that in addition to its many advances in cancer treatment in its race towards a cure, its research is also yielding unsolicited dividends in other areas as well, such as a possible lifetime vaccine against influenza, which kills about a quarter million people worldwide every year. The researchers at Dana-Farber are at the very top of their field, and they deserve our generous support. Dr. Benz also had this to say. He said, when they write the history of how cancer was conquered, the Pan Mass Challenge will be in Chapter 1. Okay, now, what was that crazy thing I asked you to remember? That's right, never say Jack Doodle Zebras. I know there's a recession and all, but the heck with that. Here's how you can help. Point your browser to tinyurl.com slash nsjdz. That's never say Jack Doodle Zebras. That link directs you over to my PMC page, and once you're there, filling out the form that says make an e-gift allows you to support my ride. This is what it looks like. By putting a number here, you can make this number be friends with this number. And of course, all contributions are tax deductible. I ask you to please be generous. My goal is to raise $6,000 and I depend on donations from people like yourself. That's $1 for every other rider who's going to join me that day. Also, if I get to $6,000, I achieve what's called heavy hitter status, which among other things means I receive a very special, highly coveted pair of spandex shorts with the word heavy hitter on them, and that marks that group of riders who perform at a high level. Now understand that it is the fondest wish of my wife, Ellen, Bryce's sister, that there be large black letters running up along my backside that says the word heavy. Please, please make her dream come true. Thank you for your patience and hearing me out. Thank you for your generosity. And never say Jack Doodle Zebras. <laughs>